Britain's emergency bikers are on the front line, racing to protect the public and save lives. And they've never been more crucial. With 33 million vehicles on UK roads, the country's congested cities and major routes are the busiest in Europe. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service provide help where it's most needed, fast. No reason you can have a lock knife, straightforward offence. How many bangs did you hear? On emergency bikers, there's a suspected chemical leak in Birmingham city centre. We've got six casualties with the potential for more that have been evacuated for the building. Can trainee biker cop Lucy Watson become the first woman on the Essex squad? You rode safely, but your position wasn't perfect. And two children have been hit crossing the road. <laughs> Birmingham, 7am, and the biker paramedics are getting ready for another 12-hour shift. Never knowing quite what lies ahead. You could have the quietest shift you've had in, in weeks, or you could have the busiest shift that you've had in months. Armed with a scaled-down version of everything a traditional ambulance carries, they are trained to deal with anything. Oh! All right, just relax, just relax. You overdosed on heroin. Somebody saw you there and they thought you were dead. To capture the action, we've put special cameras on each rider and bike, so we arrive at the scene the second they do. The paramedic bikers are holed up, waiting for a call. We should get 17 across, because that's what you are. Oh, hero. <laughs> 7.40am, rush hour in the city centre, and there's a report of a chemical leak. On call, Mark Hayes. Yes, that's your seat. Thank you. Give us a update, I'm ready. There's been a suspected leak at a supermarket and staff are complaining of throat and eye problems. The store is next to Birmingham New Street Station, which handles 140,000 commuters every day. It could be serious. Mark is just two streets away and arrives in under two minutes to be the first emergency service on the scene. Yes, yes, uh, I'm now in attendance. Um, it looks like Tesco's is evacuated. No other services in attendance at the moment. He can't take any chances. A chemical leak is potentially lethal, and no one knows what it is. Who's the manager? What, what's happening? Yeah. When I came in this morning at 7 o'clock, there was a very, very strong smell, something like methylated spirits. OK. So we weren't sure if it's like some chemical in the floor cleaner. <laughs> Okay. Um, but then also when you go down to the produce section down here, yeah. there's like there's something very strong smelling that's coming through the air conditioning as well. I've got a couple of people that have to go up onto the roof up here to switch off the air conditioning. Okay, all right. Above the flat, so they're going to switch. So nobody off. else is in the building now. Nobody's Everybody's in out. The building. All right. um, everybody's out. We don't think there's anyone downstairs. You just get everybody away from the door. We'll stand the other side of the street and we'll just uh, hang fire. Mm -hmm. Having moved most of the staff away from the area, Mark updates control. The smell that's been described is uh, it's a methylated spirit stroke, uh, an owl varnish remover type smell. The majority of staff have been evacuated from the building. However, there are three members that have gone up onto, uh, I believe, roof level to turn off air conditioning. Um, they are still in the building. If anybody has any symptoms, start to feel unwell, and I need you to be serious about it because obviously it is a serious thing. Please let yourselves be known and, and we'll start to... Everybody got a runny nose and a red eye. She's a red eye, she's a red eye. Who's got those symptoms at the moment? Everybody, including me, because we were the one who were in. You, you're telling me all of you have got... I'm fine, I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need you to be honest. So who's saying they've got run, runny eyes and runny nose? Me. You. And you, just you two. In which, and you, right, you three stay there. If you three stay over there, please. Any other symptoms? No, just the runny nose and I burning, burning. We were using continuously the tissues and this. Thing. I'm a little bit dizzy. Right. Well, just take a sit down there for me. Just to update on uh, casualties, I've got three members of staff um, that are complaining of um, burning eyes and runny nose. Um, as I say, we believe there may be three other members of staff still in the building. As three other workers emerge from the building, more people are starting to suffer. 
along with the dizziness, running noses and eyes, there's another worrying symptom. Have you, have you come out with a rash? You need to stay here then, please. Uh, we've now got um, six people um, all complaining of um, burning eyes uh, and runny nose. We're just going to treat them and triage as a precaution. A serious situation is developing. Officer Tim Hughes from the City Centre Ambulance HQ has arrived to help coordinate the operation. Sorry, what's your name, please? Sharon. Sharon, yeah. Sharon she's Hello, the manager. Sharon. All right. I'm Tim Hughes, I'm going to see you. It's all right. I'm going to need you to start doing some mobs and some paperwork. The main symptom you've got is a bit of a rash. It's a bit of a rash, it's going now, the person Yeah, OK. No burning or anything? While Mark and Barry continue to assess patients, the decision is taken to scale up the response. This is obviously now classed as a major incident because of, one, it's a, it's a chemical incident. Uh, we've got six casualties with the potential for more that have been evacuated for the building. We're in the city centre. Above Tesco, you've got flats. The Ambulance Service Hazardous Area Response Team arrives, a unit equipped to deal with major incidents from chemical leaks to terrorist attacks. The fire brigade and the police are called. The area will be sealed off. Mark and Barry's priority remains the patients. If your symptoms change whilst we're here, if you do start to feel better or you start to feel worse, it's important that you tell us. All right. <coughs> Hopefully you're going to start to feel better. Oh, OK. <laughs> need to get to your ankles, please, sir. I need you to go. Ah. You taking your medication this morning? No. I'm going to try it on the other arm. Specialist medical help has arrived to support the emergency bikers. How are you doing, Doc? Hi, Andy, You're right. Andy Thurgood. Mark. Right. Mike. Uh, six casualties from various locations within Tesco's, yeah. all pretty much complaining of the same thing. Um, burn into the eyes, uh, nose, and the back of the throat. All other observations, ECGs, oxygen saturations, so absolutely, absolutely fine. Absolutely, absolutely fine. We're just going to monitor them, <coughs> document them. And, uh, are you going to send them to hospital? Uh, we wasn't. What we were hoping to do is monitor them here. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, the one lady there, she's recovered. She had a little bit of a rash that's on her arms. Yeah. Uh, that's gone. She's starting to make a good recovery. Yeah. If that's the case, we'll clear them here. If that's yeah. all right with you. No, I think that's a good idea. They all look fine. Yeah. Happy with that. OK. All Lovely. Good. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. The patients must be closely monitored until the leak is identified and the emergency services know exactly what they are dealing with. Ladies first. Do you want to pass that over the back? We've got some more coming. And another one. Firemen with breathing apparatus prepare to go into the seven-storey building to discover just what the leak is. At the time, we thought it was a floor cleaning machine. Right. Perhaps it's got a faulty batch of the, the cleaning fluid in it. <clears throat> so we've taken that off the shop floor, put some just clear water in it and gone back round the floor again. But it seemed like there was still something coming through the um, air conditioning system. I would assume they're going to go and get samples of my air samples. Uh, they'll liaise with fire. Fire, I'll have specialists that uh, will probably already be in attendance. How's the symptoms between everybody? Any better? Now you're out in the fresh air? Improving? Yeah, improving, 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 improving. Once your symptoms are more or less gone, we can, we can discharge you from scene then. And the advice is that any worries, any concerns, uh, go to your GP. Yes. All right, so tell us when you're starting to uh, feel pretty much back to normal. All right. The symptoms seem to be easing, so uh, our role now is just to monitor the patients. Hopefully we'll be able to discharge them for scene, so there'll be no need to pass them on to a hospital. Uh, the important thing is for us that uh, obviously patient welfare, make sure that they're warm, the symptoms start to ease. We need to find out what the chemical is. Main thing is you're recovered. Yeah, which is good. It never crossed my mind whether we'd gone OTT. At the end of the day, we've got six people that are complaining of runny eyes, runny nose, burning throat. What we did was buy the book and it had to be done because potentially a large store like Tesco's in the city centre, the hundreds and possibly thousands of people that go in and out the store in a day, if it was left and it did turn out to be something nasty, I mean, casualties could be a lot higher. After the break, the biker cops crack down on drivers using mobile phones. I guess you think you'll never get caught or you, you know. Well, yeah, you know. It's wrong. And two young girls have been hit crossing the road. 
Essex, and the biker cops are cracking down on a notorious killer, mobile phones. Drivers on phones are four times more likely to be in an accident. But however well known the dangers, the number of offenders has risen over the last year. On patrol, BC McWills. Police bikers are the perfect weapon for spotting phone abuse. Riding high, it's easier for the cops to spot drivers using one. And the squad's BMW R1200RTs, which can accelerate from 0 to 60 in under four seconds, means they can swoop fast. It's not long before Mick spies his first catch. Uh, sir, no way been stopped. Yes, I was using the mobile phone. Yeah, yeah. Not got hands free in there. Uh, it's not working very well at the moment, but yeah, it should it should work. Yes. Phone users are more lethal than drink drivers. Their reactions are even slower, and the biker cops know the dangers only too well. If you're riding a bike past a road junction or you know a T junction or roundabout, and they're sitting there and they're and they're looking at you and they're chatting on the phone, you really it's just really scary because you think is he actually gonna does he know what he's looking at or is he thinking about his phone call? You know, um, so yeah, it does. It sort of fits a bit of a um, spot with me. I guess you think you'll never get caught, or you, you know. Well, yeah, so you know, it's wrong. Getting caught, it's, the best thing that happens to you. Uh, yeah. but the worst thing is that um, I have can show some terrible photographs of people that have been on phones and pulled out in front of bikes or cars, and it all ends in the right mess. You know, just because someone's mind's not on the game, really. Yeah. Despite a fine of sixty pounds and three points, there are still plenty of people taking the risk. Alongside Mick on patrol, PC Martin Eckers. Business is brisk. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm all right. Right? I'm Nick. So I've got away a bit all these years. So. <laughs> right, now's the time to go out and buy the Bluetooth, isn't it? I've got it, but it don't bloody work. <laughs> but, you, know, you can't hardly hear anybody it's sitting in the passenger seat of my van. Right. But half the time you can't hear what they're saying, so I take it off and end up picking the phone up. I don't know what we've got to do to get through to people, really. And this is just along this stretch of road. We've stopped, what, five, six, seven people within the space of about an hour and a half. Um, that's just along this road. You think of all the other roads around. We're t literally touching the tip of the iceberg here. It, it really is a problem. Try and keep my phone, please. <laughs> all right, nice to meet you. Sorry about the circumstances that's we have to meet right, under. Right, all right, and uh, thanks so much for your thanks time. All the best to you, Thank sir. You. Last year, SS Police issued more than 750 tickets in one month alone. And yet another offender has just come to Martin's attention. Is this your own motor car? It is my and it's motor registered car. to your good self it at is, your home address. It is, yeah. Right, just take some details down. Well, All right. So I just made a phone call because I'm meant to be picking my mum up. Yeah, made a quick call to, to her, no problems at all. The gentleman didn't have a seatbelt on, very clearly seen through the driver's door window. And also, as he's just pulled in, I've noticed that he was on, a, on his phone as well. So I'll just have a chat with the guy, run him through a few uh, checks on him and see what I'm going to get with him, really. Might be a bit lenient, might not be. We'll see how we get on, really, how he speaks to me. Have you got any points on your driving licence? I don't think so, no. Providing the checks are all OK that you have no points on your driving licence, yeah. what I'll say to yourself, you may choose right. to have the ticket for the mobile phone, Right. The ticket for the seatbelt, right. or the third option, which I've never had anyone take up, but you could be my first, right. you could have both tickets. <laughs> Can I persuade you to have both? No, one or the other. Joking aside, yeah, road no, no, safety. Well. Yeah, cool, yeah. I totally understand. Please stay cop. off the phone. Fair cop, fair cop. Yeah. yeah, and please keep your belt on. Yeah. Not surprisingly, the driver opted for the seatbelt ticket and was fined £60. The police have a mountain to climb in educating drivers about phone use. And it's not just motorists who are at it, as biker squad sergeant Nick Edwards has discovered. Probably the strangest thing I've dealt with on a motorcycle was um, a young lad, a 16 year old on a scooter um, a number of years ago that was texting using uh, his left hand on his mobile phone, um, sending a text message. He wasn't wearing any gloves and he had jeans on and a sweatshirt and a helmet, I think, and not a lot else. He did say that he had gloves with him and they were indeed under his seat and they were a fantastic pair of carbon knuckle gloves. And when I asked him wasn't, why he wasn't wearing them, he said, because I can't text while I'm wearing the gloves. <laughs> 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 
Birmingham, a 2009 survey cites the city as having the third highest accident rate in the country. In the UK, around 20% of those injured are pedestrians under 15. And Mark Hayes has just had a call. The van that's going into two children. A 13-year-old girl and a three-year-old sister have been hit crossing the road on the edge of the city centre, just yards from home. They were off to buy some pop. As an emergency biker, Mark can get through the traffic faster than a traditional ambulance. And in just under four minutes, he's covered more than three miles to take control. Will you do me a big favour? Yes. My name's Mark. I'm a paramedic, and I'm going to look after you. Make sure that you're not hurt. Right? Can you do me a favour, then, please, my lord? Until we've checked you out properly, I need you to be nice and still. Yes. All right. So just nice. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Take over the head. Yeah. All right. Your mum's here. Do us a favour, Mum. Come down here to her level. Do me a favour, just ask her to calm down and she's nice and still. She's going to be all right. Do you have any pain in your head, your neck or your back? Don't shake your head. Just say yes or no. Right. Any pain down here? Any pain down here? Any pain down here? Down here. Move your feet for me. Move your fingers for me. Squeeze my hands. Lovely. Do you have any pins and needles anywhere? Right. Just for a second, what I want you to do is just stay nice and still. She's, uh, is she normally quiet? No, she's usually jumping around off Both girls will be taken to Birmingham Children's Hospital for further checks. My initial uh, thoughts were uh, a van versus two you. children. It does go through your mind, you do think the worst. With children, uh, a noisy child is a good child, that's a good sign. Uh, it's when they're really, really quiet um, and lethargic, that's the time to worry. Crucial medical decisions combined with concentrated fast riding pile on the pressure, but Mark knows just how to cope, fishing with his kids. Oh. Yeah, watch your float. It's moving. You do think of family if you've gone out to an RTC where there's a child involved. It's just nice to get home and see them, and uh, it, it makes you very, very grateful for what you've got. Duck's laughing at you because you've not caught anything. You haven't caught anything either. Probably laughing at you. <laughs> that is I could true, probably Dad. do better than you. And plus, you've been here longer, so you've done even rubbisher <laughs> than me. Rubbisher. Yeah, whatever. Essex biker cops have had a huge impact. In five years, their vigilance on key county routes has helped to cut the road injury and death rate by nearly a third. Now the squad's doubling in size, aiming to be the first woman on the unit, 47-year-old mum of two, PC Lucy Watson. She's already started her advanced training, but with no guarantees she'll pass the gruelling three-week course, she's got to prove she's got what it takes. I started riding in the woods when I was 12, had a moped when I was 16, had a 125 when I was 17. I never owned a car for years. One of my childhood ambitions was to be a traffic motorcyclist. She didn't get off to the best of starts. first week I was wondering if I'd left this too late. Um, it was all a bit hard getting all my confidence back. But um, yeah, it suddenly all clicked after four days on the bike and uh, thoroughly enjoying it. Now the course gets even tougher. Blue light training, simulating a dash to an emergency at speeds twice the national limit. And instructor Sergeant Ian Mashida is under no illusions just how dangerous it can be. Bikes do tend to get through the traffic a lot quicker. There's also the inherent dangers. It is inherently an unstable machine, only having two wheels, and uh, the vulnerability of the rider uh, without any metal work around them. Should they unfortunately crash, the chances are they will be injured. Wait for a reaction from any of the car drivers and wait till your gap is there before you create it. Leave yourselves escape routes. I will demonstrate first off, then I'll ask you to 
take over and we'll take it from there. Ian will lead Lucy on her first run through and around Chelmsford and Braintree, combining the hazards of city centre traffic and fast open roads. Riding on blues and twos demands cool control and speed. Lucy's got to ride fast but must also quickly assess hazards. She must keep herself out of trouble. You put yourself in direct conflict with all other road users. You're asking car drivers to move out of the way. You're asking pedestrians not to cross the road. And you're all doing it at a fairly high speed. Unless you've got to a certain amount of self-control, the adrenaline can take over. Now it's Lucy's turn to take the lead. She's got to set the pace and spot the dangers. Back at base, it's time for Ian's critique. From my point of view, that was fine. There wasn't any problems there. You were very safe. And the pace that you went through Braintree was excellent, especially as it's market day. You know, we came around that bend near the White Hart Hotel. And there's people crossing the road, and there's all sorts. So you took your time as you got through there, which is good. If anything had pulled out in front of you, you would have just been able to stop and avoided a collision. So that was good. We got through the traffic, we got through the town. We didn't cause anybody to take any evasive action. It's all done very controlled. It was an uneventful ride, which is great. That's all right, I like it. <laughs> Her final assessment is just around the corner and she's feeling optimistic. It's the best course I've ever done. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, it's, it's just reminded me of all the things I loved about motorcycling. I think, yeah, it's, it's all come back and I'm absolutely loving it. After the break, can Lucy hold her nerve and become the first woman on the biker squad? I don't like being assessed. I don't think anyone does. It puts you under pressure. And there's trouble in Birmingham city centre. It's all a bit hazy at the moment, but there's been some sort of fight. Birmingham, one of the most densely populated cities in the UK, where temperatures can sometimes run high. There's been a fight, and a teenager is said to be injured. On duty, Steve Harris. On his motorcycle, Steve can go where a traditional ambulance can't, through a pedestrian precinct and into the crowd. Instead of looking at you here, why don't we pop you down in the ambulance? It's all a bit hazy at the moment, but there's been some sort of fight between a large group of people. The girl we're just taking down to the ambulance has been hit around the head. Uh, we're going to examine her there where it's quiet. We can assess her properly and get her out of this situation. The teenager has been whisked to the safety of the ambulance. Emergency bikers are vulnerable, but Steve knows how to keep out of trouble. You do feel vulnerable, with, especially riding up to the ramp. Police are in attendance. Uh, I know they're going to look after me if need be. I've got enough experience to think that if, if I do feel at all threatened, that I'll just withdraw. But it doesn't mean he's not in the firing line. I understand that there's one or two being taken away by the police. Whether they have injuries, we may discover. Having said that, I don't always feel threatened, and uh, I've got experience. Uh, as you've just seen whilst uh, filming there, we've had a, one or two uh, plastic bottles thrown at us. They could have, as it was, they were plastic, but they could have been glass. But a few plastic bottles is nothing compared to some of the situations Steve has found himself in. I have been physically uh, assaulted. I have been punched, I've been pushed, I've been kicked. Particular incident I uh, attended, I had a young lady in the back of the ambulance and the back doors opened and it was the young lady's boyfriend they'd had a row. I tried to prevent him coming in and as, I, uh, as he was trying to come through the door, he punched me. and knocked me down the, the length of the ambulance. For an ambulance man to turn up 
whose only aim is to help someone and then to be physically or uh, ver verbally abused, I think is very sad. The 999 calls come into a house fire on the outskirts of the city centre. Paramedic biker Mark Hayes is on his way. In just over two minutes, he's the first paramedic on scene. No one knows if anyone is in the house. There's rooms upstairs in the property that appear to be locked. So until they've gained access to those rooms and confirmed that there's nobody in the property, uh, we'll just remain on standby. But the dangers are, of a fire are poisonous gases that uh, come off burning furniture, certain materials, um, smoke inhalation. Um, the heat uh, can quickly swell and occlude the airway. You know, within minutes, the patient can be uh, critically ill if, or even dead. After a thorough search, it's confirmed that the house is empty. Empty, that is, apart from 150 illegal plants in the bedroom. Yeah, it would appear the fire started um, a box covering the electric meter. Um, there's uh, believed to be some sort of uh, cannabis plantation upstairs, and uh, it would appear that they've bypassed the electrics uh, for the uh, little cannabis farm that they've got, which has obviously uh, caused the electrics to short out and uh, resulting in a fire. I would imagine if they were to turn into the street now, they would just turn around and go the opposite direction. Cannabis factories are becoming more common. This one isn't particularly big, and the emergency services can be thankful that, unlike some, it wasn't booby-trapped. PC Lucy Watson is just hours away from hopefully becoming the first woman to join Essex Police Biker Squad. But as she faces her final riding assessment, the weather's not on her side. I know I can do it. I've just got to go out and do it. Obviously, we've got uh, the first day today where the roads are wet. We've had a bit of rain overnight. The whole course has been dry, so that's, uh, that's sod's law, really, isn't it? But just means we have to take it a little bit more carefully. Wet roads are a biker's worst nightmare. There'll be spray, tarmac slippery as ice, and she'll have to watch how hard she breaks on the day-long 200-mile run. It is an important day. There's a bit of pressure on to perform well. And when there is that added extra little bit of pressure, um, they can make mistakes. Best of luck, Lucy. Veteran biker PC Ray Jeffrey has a 24-year accident-free riding record. And he knows just what yeah. Lucy is facing. It doesn't matter how confident or capable you are. The minute someone's watching what you're doing, it all gets a bit tense, doesn't mm. it? I don't think there's anyone who isn't affected in that scenario, is there? No. I remember it vividly. You'll be yes. fine. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Instructor Martin Ackers has the perfect way to break the tension. Check the cobwebs for us, please. <laughs> what do you do with one of these anyway? <laughs> but soon it's time to kit up for the riding skills test. Right. Hello, around, folks. Um, if Lucy goes first, please, then I'll wave you through in a traditional manner and then just, just ride your normal ride at the end of the day. Wet, be a bit smoother, and take off a couple of three miles an hour. Ride the way you've been riding. Um, end of the course, enjoy it. Wet roads or not, this is it. Sergeant Ian Mashida will monitor her every step of the way. She can't afford to make any mistakes. And this BMW bike, top speed of 135 and weighing a quarter of a tonne, takes some handling. Has she done enough? Well, I suppose you want to know how you've done? As I said before we did the ride this morning, uh, all I wanted to see was a bit of consistency. And I have to say, both your rides this morning were spot on. Yeah, OK, you made mistakes, but they're only minor. For you, Lucy, the start of your ride was really, really good. You got in some excellent overtakes, and you didn't miss one overtake, and you didn't do an overtake that wasn't appropriate or on. When I took you off the fast road and put you down that twisty 507, where there's so many inspection covers, repairs on the road. You couldn't really 
take the perfect line. So you did the right thing. You sacrificed your position in the interest of safety. And unfortunately, there was just one small section of bends where because of that, you went into the first bend in the wrong position for the bend, but the right position for safety. And you found it difficult to then recover and get your bend position. It was really just, you know, that small section of five bends that you rode safely, but your position wasn't perfect. Taking that into consideration, the whole ride was good. So, well done. But it's not a done deal yet. There's a written exam she must pass to claim her place on the squad. It's 100 questions, but 75% is the pass mark. They know that if they fail that exam, despite how well they can ride a motorcycle, they're not getting their permit. So, after an hour and a half, what's the result? Right, uh, well done. Three weeks of very hard work. Congratulations. Passed your course. Um, both now standard trained riders, and as from immediate effect, you can ride police patrol bikes on your own. Well done. Sorry, thank you very much. Good to have Excellent. you on board. Thank Lucy, you. fantastic. Thank really you. worked hard. I was Not apprehensive well at the done. beginning. Not sure whether my skill level was going to get back to where it needed to be, whether I was too old to, to start learning new skills really. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. Click, 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 it's right. all over. I'm absolutely thrilled. I just can't wait now to get out on the bike and start doing my job. Birmingham. And a 999 call has just come in. A woman is convulsing near Birmingham New Street Station. On call, Barry Rudge. He races to the scene, arriving in just under a minute, and he recognises someone who's a regular patient. March. She's been suffering from epilepsy since she was 16. Drugs don't seem to help, so she's trying out a device which electronically shocks her brain out of an epileptic state. You find it's helping or not? Well, it, when it's used on me, it's inside me, connected to the back of the yeah. brain, I hate to say, or it's a tryout. Yeah. This has to be used over me when I'm in a convulsion and it stops me from being in a fit. For so long? As, you know, as long as what I usually am. Right. It's just a tryout. Do we have to document that for you now or not? If you or, do you, or do you document it? Well, if you could put it in, because I don't yeah, remember course. anything. All right, well, I'll do, I'll do this while we're, we're just getting you to come back to normal. Yeah. All right. You've got no injuries due to the fit when you went down to the floor? No, I went through the past three. She's got quite a tough existence. Uh, she's got lots and lots of injuries due to her due to her fits. She's got a rather nasty burn on her arm where uh, I think she had a fit at home in the kitchen and she actually sort of set herself on fire once. And we'll see you soon, probably. All right. Okay, <laughs> Take care, darling. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks there you go. Time. All right. Mom, what are you doing? The biker paramedics can find themselves in some unusual places. Mark Hayes is responding to a call from the Central Police Station. A man is lying motionless in his cell, having refused food and drink for 24 hours. Just be aware that um, this gentleman has this drink and has it when he's been trying to be given injections when he's in this state. Yeah. He's in out. He doesn't oh. do it on purpose, I don't think, but okay. they said that he has in the past. OK, thank you. Hello. This English gentleman is here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, mate, open your eyes for me. Come on, chap. You're holding your arm in there, I need to have a look at you. Come on, matey. Come on. I'm a paramedic, I've come to make sure you're okay. And open your eyes for me. The man seems docile enough, but Mark must be on his guard. He's, uh, he's, he's quite clearly awake, because as I've gone to, to move his arm, he's, he's uh, withholding, so. Yeah, the chap that's here for the team said, he says it's like a cast-type piece, so it's right next to it. It's okay. It's pretty good. Okay. 
An ambulance crew arrives, ready to take the man to hospital. He's obviously aware that we're here, so we're just going to slide him down a bit, yeah. do a few baseline offs, and then take it from there. A bit of a warning from police. Previously, if he's gone to have injections or anything, he has been known to lash out. Right. Um, all right, so. Come on then. Can I open your eyes, matey? Open your eyes, come on. Just brave enough to do the BM. <laughs> Mark needs to carry up basic observations, blood pressure, heart rate, and blood oxygen levels. But the man won't cooperate. Deliberately flicking it off. Yeah, he's playing the game. The fuse. Okay. Obviously, we're not going to try and uh, force treatment upon him because uh, we don't want to upset him. Um, it's best that we keep him in a in this state really for transportation reasons uh, it's far safer for him and people travelling on the ambulance and um, he's, uh, he'll be transported to uh, a place of safety where he's going to be assessed properly. It could be that there's not much wrong but Mark can't down. take any chances. Sit down. The man's condition must be fully investigated. Good to go. He will be escorted by police officers to hospital. Obviously you have to take every patient on what they're saying on, and what you find as to whether that's what's really going on. That remains to be seen. After the break, new biker cop Lucy chases the suspect. Essex, biker cop squad HQ and the unit's first woman, PC Lucy Watson, is gearing up for her first day on duty. Yeah, the boys said I had to have marigolds and I had to be pink for cleaning the bike, so I'm playing the game. I'm really looking forward to it, so I can now ride the bikes and I'm fairly confident as a police officer, but putting the two together is seems a bit strange at the moment. Squad Sergeant Nick Edwards is assigning her to an area near the picture postcard village of Finchingfield in the northwest of the county. It's a biker's paradise full of sweeping bends and twisting lanes. But in the last three years, two motorcyclists have been killed and seven seriously injured. It's unknown territory for Lucy. I'm trying not to get lost, that's no. my biggest problem. And she's going to have to keep her wits about her because it's raining and the roads are going to be doubly dangerous. She's on the lookout for speeders, but it looks like it's going to be a washout. I'm supposed to be out looking for motorbikes, and we've, I think I've seen two all morning. In a bid to find some, Lucy switches location, and she's soon on to something. A white van driver is using his mobile on the move. She quickly turns and sets off to chase him down. But the lorry is nowhere to be seen. It could easily have disappeared down one of the many side roads. But after a 65 mile an hour chase, Lucy finally catches sight of it on the edge of the village of Great Dunlow, a mile away. There's a car between her and the target, which is now veering across the road. She's got herself right behind the lorry, poised to make her first pull. So just stand on the path for me, please. Thank you. Okay, the reason you've been stopped today is because as we passed you back there, you were using your mobile phone whilst you were driving. Okay, I take it, appreciate it. It's taken a couple of minutes for me to swim around and catch you up again, but I'm going to be reporting if you're using your mobile phone. And I'm just cautioning you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention or in question something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I have to ask you, were you making an emergency call? No, I wasn't. Okay. Do you have your driving licence with you, sir? Do you have any points on it, do you know? Yes, I do. How many? Six. You need to be even more careful. You're going to get another three today. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be a £60 fine and three points on your licence. If you get caught again, you're looking at disqualification, aren't you? Yes. 
So you really do need to yes, I do. drive like a saint. Do you drive for a living? Uh, yes. Okay. Please don't use your phone while you're driving because okay. it's, it's us who picks up the pieces when it all goes horribly wrong. No, right. no, no. All right, and it does wreck lives. Yeah, no That's problem. why we're out here today. No, no, all right. No. You have a safe journey. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. All right, cheers. It's the achievement of a very early childhood dream to be a traffic motorcyclist. Never really thought I would achieve that in later years, but yes, so I've got there and I'm really pleased. Birmingham, zero tolerance on booze in the city centre, but Mark races through a pedestrian area to one of his regulars. A man who's had a skinful, fallen over and is staggering around. Mark's dealt with him many a time. Do me a favour, come and sit on the steps here. See my key worker, it could make you today. Yeah, all right, sit down there so you don't fall and hurt yourself. All right. How much we had today? Four. Four. You've had a bit of a fall as well, have you? Yeah. The man has a history of rolling up a casualty and wants to only go to Selly Oak Hospital just beyond the city centre. Right. Over the years, we keep coming out to you, mate. Yeah, yeah. I know that. People offer you the help. You've got to appreciate hospitals are for the emergency situation. Yeah. If you've got a key worker, you've got a GP, these yeah. are the people that need to be trying to sort things out for you. I need help this week. I need help this week. What, what we'll do is we'll pop you up to City Hospital. No, I won't go up to City well, that's all we can do, mate. No. You have to go to the nearest casualty, which is City Hospital, Dudley Road. Yeah? They, they kicked me out a window yesterday. Yeah. They threw me out. They threw me out. The man has refused treatment, but Mark can't leave him in case he injures himself again. The police step in to help. How you doing? You're right. You're right. Um, you want, sir, a regular gentleman of ours, he's, um, he's refusing to go to Arsenal Ward. I've said that he's not safe to be walking the streets. If, if we don't take him to Arsenal, we, we're going to be coming back out and there will be issues. This is, this is how it's got to be. We're going to be popping you to hospital. It's for your own good, mate. But you don't keep me in this thing. My concern is, at the moment, if you stay on the street as you are, you're intoxicated, you're going to fall, you're going to hurt yourself, yeah? Everybody here is because they want to help, yeah? Just sit yourself back no, down, mate. You're going to hurt that's yourself. One med that's one medication. Don't start clenching your fists and getting aggressive. That's no. Sit down. No. no. I'm going. Simple. I'm sit going. down, wait for the ambulance, or you, you just walk told me I'm going to walk away. Negotiations could be protracted and stop Mark from responding to other emergency calls. He has to hand over to the police. He's refusing to go to hospital. If we put him on a vehicle and he starts to get up, starts playing up, he's putting himself at danger, the crew at danger. And even if we get him to casualty, he's likely just to cause problems, which, you know, it's not fair on other patients. Although he's entitled to help and over the years he's received help, we, we know this gentleman very, very well. Unfortunately, as he is at the moment, there's not a lot we can do with him. The leak at the city centre store turned out to be a spillage of chilli oil, enough to cause some alarming symptoms. The sisters hit crossing the road escaped with minor injuries. 